The final method of analysis that we will talk about for AC circuits is um, something called Thevenin equivalent circuits. And so we looked at Thevenin equivalent circuits for DC, and now we will follow the same procedure and um, also be able to figure out a Thevenin equivalent circuit for, uh, for AC circuits. And of course, we know this is everyone's favorite. Uh, that was a joke. So, um, so basically, a Thevenin equivalent circuit is nice because you can take a complicated circuit and you can reduce it down to one voltage supply and if we're talking about DC, one resistor. And so it works similarly for AC circuits. If we have a complicated circuit, we can reduce the circuit down to a single equivalent voltage supply, AC source, and one equivalent impedance, at least connected across a set of terminals. And what that allows us to do is to change the components that we put across the terminals and not have to go back through and reanalyze a complicated circuit. So it turns out that the steps for determining a Thevenin equivalent circuit for AC are very similar to DC. And so we'll go through an example of this. So the first step would be to remove the load from the circuit and label the open terminal A and B if they're not already labeled. So basically, what, what are the terminals that we want to determine the Thevenin equivalent circuit across? After we determine um, where that load is and we label those components, we'll set all of the sources in the circuit to zero, or we'll remove them. Maybe setting them to zero is not the best way to say it. Voltage sources are replaced by short circuits, similar to um, superposition principle, and current sources are replaced by open circuits. We then determine the Thevenin equivalent impedance, which is, called, which is written as ZTH, by calculating the impedance seen between the terminals AB. So basically, if we measured the impedance across AB, what value would we get? We can then replace the source that was removed in step two and determine the open circuit voltage between those terminals. So across the terminal that we, this AB terminal, we put the voltage supply back in and we measure what is the voltage across that open terminals. And we can use techniques um, discussed to find this voltage. We could use superposition, we could use series parallel, Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and so on. The resulting open circuit voltage, VAB, is the Thevenin equivalent voltage. And both of these are actually phasors, of course, and so we have to treat them as such. And then we can draw the Thevenin equivalent circuit and place the load back into the circuit. So, of course, the easiest thing here is just to look at an example. So let's go ahead and let's look at this example. So we're going to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit across the terminals AB. So here's A and here's B. And uh, which is basically a, the inductor. So we're going to remove this inductor from the circuit and we're going to replace everything else um, across those terminals with one voltage supply and one total equivalent impedance. And then after we do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this load back into the circuit and we're going to determine um, what is the voltage across that load. So the first thing we probably should do is to go ahead and um, figure out what the reactive value is, at least for this capacitor for now. Um, the inductor is going to be taken out of the circuit, so we don't need to worry about it at the moment. So, um, so I have a resistor of 5 kilo ohms. I have a resistor here of 0.5 kilo ohms. And I need to know the reactance of this particular capacitor. So the reactance is 1 over the angular frequency times the capacitance. My angular frequency for this source is 2,000 rads per second times 0.2 um, times 10 to the minus 6 because it's microfarads. And that gives me 2,500 ohms or 2.5 kilo ohms. So the first thing that we would do is to open up the circuit across AB. So that means removing this inductor. And so that inductor has been removed from the circuit here. And I have gone through and written down what the impedance values are for each of the components that are left. And I've taken the voltage supply and I've written it in terms of phasor notation. And when we go from um, the time domain to the frequency domain or the, the, the um, phasor notation, the, the, the voltage we use is the effective voltage. So we've taken that 10 volts divided by the square root of 2. So the first, um, so after we open the circuit, the next thing is to find the Thevenin equivalent impedance. And so in order to do that, 
we have to figure out what is the total equivalent impedance across this open um, circuit right here. So if we were to measure it, what would we get? So this is often something that gives people a lot of trouble. Um, but you want to work your way towards this open circuit. So I would start farther away and make my way towards the open circuit. And the first thing that I realize is that the impedance Z1 and the impedance for this capacitor are actually connected in parallel. So if I look at one node right here, that resistor is connected and the capacitor is connected. And when I go to this other node, the capacitor is connected and the resistor. So that means that those two components are connected in parallel. So I can figure out what the total equivalent impedance is for those two components which are connected in parallel. Because there's only two of them, it's easier to add them in terms of multiplying the quantities and then dividing by the addition of the two quantities rather than using the reciprocal method. It's just for me, this is a little bit easier. So um, this is again only because there are two of them in parallel. So uh, Z1 is 5 kilo ohms phase angle of 0. Um, the capacitor is 2.5 kilo ohms phase angle of minus 90. And then I would um, add those two quantities together for the bottom portion. So I can multiply the top, I get 12.5 phase angle of minus 90, and I can convert the bottom into polar form, and then I can divide. And I find that the total equivalent impedance of those two components connected in parallel is 4.83 with a phase angle of minus 63.4. So now I can replace those two components which were connected in parallel with some total equivalent impedance, um, ZT1 up here. And now my goal, of course, is to figure out what is the impedance across this opened. And I realize that I have these two components, um, the resistor here, 0.5 kilo ohms, and this total equivalent impedance, and they are connected in series, right? One to the other and then to those terminals. So the Thevenin equivalent impedance is just the addition of the two impedance values connected in series. So this would be 0.5 kilo ohms, angle of zero, and then my total equivalent impedance that I found above, 4.83 kilo ohms, phase angle of minus 63.4. I need to put those into rectangular form in order to add them together. I can then add the real parts and add the imaginary parts, and then I can convert that into phasor notation. So I found that my feminine equivalent impedance is equal to 5.07 kilo ohms with a phase angle of minus 58.4. And I'm going to keep that in mind as I move forward. So the next step is to find the Thevenin equivalent voltage. And so the Thevenin equivalent voltage is just the voltage that we would read across this open terminal right here. And so one of the things that I realize is that if this is opened across this terminal here, then that means that current cannot flow through this section right here because it's opened. And so that means that this resistor, this 5, 0.5 kilo ohm resistor, is not going to have any voltage across it. So I'm only going to have to worry about one complete loop that I do have, which is this loop on the left. And so for that loop on the left, that is a single loop, and this um, impedance Z1 is in series with this capacitive um, impedance. And the other thing I realize is that if I want to know what the voltage is across this open circuit here, according to Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law, if I sum the voltages around this loop here, the voltage across this opened has to equal the voltage across this capacitor because the voltage across this resistor is, is just going to be zero, right, because there's no current. So essentially, if I put my meter across the two terminals here, I would read the voltage across that capacitor. So my Thevenin equivalent voltage is the voltage across the opened, and it's going to be whatever the voltage is across this particular capacitor. And that capacitor has voltage based on the fact that it is in a complete circuit connected to this voltage supply. So I can ignore um, my Z2 here, and I can look at just my loop on the left. And looking at that loop, I have my impedance Z1 in series with the capacitor. And so I can find the total equivalent impedance for that loop, which I'm calling loop A, with current IA in it.
So I would add the 5 kilo ohms to the impedance value, which is 2.5 kilo ohms. And of course, it's a, it's a capacitor, so it's an imaginary, negative imaginary part. And then I can convert that into phasor notation, and I get the total equivalent impedance in that circuit is 5.59 kilo ohms with a phase angle of minus 26.6. Now my goal, of course, is to find the Thevenin equivalent voltage across here, specifically to find the voltage on um, this capacitor. I could use this total impedance to figure out the current in the circuit, and then using that current I could find the voltage, or I could use the voltage divider rule. So I have one voltage supply, two components that are connected in series, and so the voltage divides between the capacitor and this resistor here, Z1. So according to the voltage divider rule, the voltage across the capacitor is just the total voltage across the components that are connected in series times the impedance of the capacitor over the total equivalent uh, impedance of those components that are connected in series. So the total voltage is just the source, which is 10 volts of the square root of 2 with a phase angle of 0. The capacitive impedance is 2.5 kilo ohms, phase angle of minus 90. The total equivalent impedance for the two components connected in series is 5.59 and so I can um, I can do my multiplication of my phasers and I get 3.16 with a phase angle of minus 63.4 degrees and so that is my Thevenin equivalent voltage and if I want to I can write it in the time domain um, so I would have to take the effective value and figure out what the amplitude is by multiplying by the square root of 2. I know that my source had an angular frequency of 2,000, and then I could go ahead and put in that, um, that phase angle. So what does this mean? This means that I could take that complicated, somewhat complicated circuit, and I can now replace everything across the terminals AB with some total equivalent impedance, which is the Thevenin um, impedance, which we found to be 5.07, phase angle of minus 58.4. And the source has um, a voltage of 3.16, phase angle of minus 63.4. So everything that was to the left of that terminal is now replaced by one voltage supply and one impedance value. I can then go back and put in my load, or my, in this case, my inductor, and I can try to solve for what is the voltage across the inductor using this more simplistic um, circuit. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to figure out what is the reactance for this particular capacitor. And the inductive reactance is the angular frequency times the inductance. So 2,000 um, rads per second times the um, Inductance, which is 0.5 Henry, gives me 1,000 ohms or 1 kilo ohm. My goal is to figure out the voltage across the inductor, and I realize that I now have a simple series circuit, and that the Thevenin impedance is in uh, series with the inductive impedance. So I can find the total equivalent impedance in the circuit by adding, by adding those two values together. So the Thevenin... Uh, impedance is 2.26 kilo ohms minus 4.32 kilo ohms in the imaginary part. It's this piece right here, plus the inductive piece. I can add those values together, adding the real parts and adding the imaginary parts, and I can get the total equivalent impedance in that circuit is 4.25 kilo ohms, phase angle of minus 53.1. After I find the total impedance, my goal is to figure out what the voltage across this inductor is. And so again, I could realize I have a series circuit. I could figure out the current based on the total equivalent impedance. And then I could use that to figure out the voltage, or I could use the voltage divider rule. So the voltage across the inductor is just the total voltage um, in the circuit of those components connected in series, which is the Thevenin voltage times the impedance of the inductor over the total equivalent impedance. So I can put the values in for my Thevenin voltage, my impedance of the inductor, the total equivalent impedance. I can do uh, my phasor uh, multiplication and division, and I get that the voltage across the inductor is 0.744 volts with a phase angle of 79.9 um, degrees.
70, 77.9 degrees. I could then also convert that back into um, the time domain, taking the effective value and multiplying by the square root of 2, and then my angular frequency was 2,000. So, uh, of course, the nice thing about this is, is that with Thevenin circuits, if you wanted to now take out this inductor and replace it with a resistor, you don't have to go back through and recalculate the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin impedance. Those stay the same. And so you could replace and put anything across the terminals here, AB, and then you could reanalyze the circuit just using a simple series circuit, which is, of course, easier than going back and trying to reanalyze the circuit every time from changing those different components, which is what makes Thevenin circuits very powerful. And, of course, Thevenin circuits can be a little challenging in terms of um, identifying what's in series and what's in parallel and how to find those values, but uh, hopefully some of the techniques that were used for DC can be applied here again for AC, just keeping in mind that we have to use phasor notation and impedance values.